used to be out on the corner, he was dealing in drugs. Got himself a barber's chair and gave us some cuts. Now he's a podcaster, his life he'll talk about it with us. And now it's Jeff FM. Jeff FM. All right, we're back with another episode of Jeff FM on location. We <laughs> are in New York, so we don't have the. Yeah, I, I'm not even going to do the Jeff FM theme song. We used to be. Auto tune. Out in the corner, we were so Jeff of him. I don't know it. I'm um, here with Tana. <laughs> so everybody, finally, you get you get to get an episode that you want to watch for once. That's crazy. I think people want to watch all of your episodes. We're here for New York Fashion Week. It was a great time. We, we ate. We we slaved. absolutely ate. I well, this is our tradition now. Yeah. Like we did this last year, and that was like our first trip where I felt like we like bonded. You know. So we are not having sound bites here and not having the crew. Um, you you're going to be my Kyle today. So <laughs> if I just like ask you a question about orcas or like, you know, some sort of sea animal, just, you know, if you just help yeah. me out with a little, a little info Every on Every single car ride in New York, we've been like riding to like a fashion show and Jeff like has to stop the music, which is such a big pet peeve of mine to like pause the car conversation to show me a video of orcas and seals. I'm interested in a lot of weird stuff right now. Do you like Shark Week? Uh, yeah. You strike me as a Shark Week kind of guy. It's just I got into uh, deep sea stuff on TikTok and then it just, you know, you the Chinese like have my, and uh, now they have all my data and they're just like, all right, we're going to hit him with these deep sea animals all on all of his platforms. That's everything I get now. Do you think like, it started with the submarine? Probably going down deep sea and that submarine got me into yeah. this al algorithm of the deep sea. You like fucked up shit. Mm -hmm. You make me more aware of the fucked up shit happening in the world. Yeah. We were supposed to um, celebrate. I was about to say celebrate 9-11 together. That's crazy. That is not what I meant to say at all. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm well, mm. we, we've been doing a lot. We've been in a lot of cars. Spend. We've been in fashion shows. We've been talking. On the way here, I put my AirPods in on you because I was like, we've been talking about everything. Some real sociopath behavior where like in the middle of a conversation, he's like, actually, I'm going to go AirPods. And I go, what? <laughs> Well, I, just yeah, I put AirPods on you in the car, which is super disrespectful, but we're just doing a pod, you and me today. So it's like, so I felt like I was going on a date with you right now. Like this, when we do these podcasts together, it's like we're on a date, you know, happier here. So you could kind of like be the third wheel, but you're going on an actual date after this. You're, uh, am I allowed to say just that? Just now he was like, are you guys, but he paused. He was like, are you guys based in New York or based in LA? Yeah. And you I was like dating? Like, yeah, Like, are. yeah, immediately thought the guy, I think that. You're hyper fixated on dating me today. Don't, don't <laughs> look at her Instagram feed right now. Go to her Instagram feed and say, let's let's see who is hyper fixated on our. Let's. So you can't even her, say friendship. The friendship. I was going to say fake relationship, but it's a friendship. No, it's a you're friendship. You're in one photo of like ten. And you called and me. You're one, my boyfriend. You call me one of the girls, <laughs> and you know. I actually specifically captioned that photo like New York Fashion Week with my girls, so that yours and my hose wouldn't get too pressed. Because I felt like we looked a little couple-y. So you're worried that, like, it'll actually affect your real-life relationships? It's not that. It's that I think I've been down the rabbit hole of relationship baiting. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, like, I don't I, – I've learned that I, I don't necessarily enjoy when the lines are, like, super blurred. So I try to, like – you know, I like to give the people what they want. So you don't worry, like, going on a date tonight, having, like, all your content recently be, like – me and Jeff, and then this guy's going to look at that. And, and he's a friend of mine. He's also a, a, fan, a big fan of mine. He's a fan of the show okay, that you're going I, on a date. It's also not a date. I just want to say that. It's like so – and that – see that you're so in love with me. You're like, no, it's He's going to be like, I don't want to step on Jeff's toes. No, I talk to him about our friendship all the time. Okay, well – He's also my friend though. Like, and you're being – Let's skip past it. The ship <laughs> – the, 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 the ship baiting, whatever. Fucking – we're a good comedy duo. We're better yeah. than – me and Mike and you and Brooke. <laughs> so let's just admit it. They, do you do you think we're a better duo than you and Mike and me and Brooke? Like actually, I kind of do sometimes. I think you and I are. I don't know. Just me and Mike. Sometimes we we're just a little repetitive. You know, you always come in with some fresh new stuff. You're dating somebody new. You're doing some new business thing. You're throwing a new convention or some. You got you got something cool going on. I I also think you and I really get along. Yeah, that too. Like, and we really, when I'm sober, we really get along. Yeah. We were just talking about moving in together and having a kid together, so casually, both. Well, Which thing, should we talk about first? Things just go so good for us when we're in New York, and I just love it here. I love I love uh, the realness of people. Mm. There's real people. There's 
more Fuck action going York. on. LA sucks. Everybody's out there for themselves. Over here, we have family. We have like. His family. I don't know. Yeah. I, well, yeah. <laughs> My family's <Yeah>. in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, there's just real yeah. people of, of all different ages that are not just trying to make it for themselves. People are living real lives. Here. I know. I've been, I feel like you and I kind of both hit the, the vibe of like, fuck LA at the same time. Like, this year, it's really. I mean, since the pandemic, it's, like, all been downhill in L.A. for some reason to me. Yeah. But, like, this year, I'm, like, I've really had this, like, burning desire to, like, escape L.A. I get depressed in L.A. bad. Yeah. I, I know you probably see it in me, but <laughs> when I'm here, I don't know. Like, I got to see my mom on 9-11, and we were walking around the memorial. You were supposed to come, but you slept in a little bit. So you just uh, – imagine you slept in on 9-11, <laughs> the actual one. You know, that's that's where my lateness maybe could have worked in my favor. Well, the people that slept in on 9-11 and worked in the towers that saved their lives. That's what I'm saying. So it's like every time I'm late to something, it's like maybe you. Yeah, maybe you skip. Maybe you would have died out there that day. I need to I stop was three. joking. I need to stop joking. <laughs> I around. was three years old. So, I was in daycare. You know, my first memory, actually, I think absolutely ever. Well, my second memory absolutely ever is 9-11. I was in daycare. And it was on the TV. And you remember that? Yeah. My first memory ever, I was in a hot tub. <laughs> you were in a hot tub at three? No, at like one or two. It's my first memory ever. And when I think about it, I'm like, I definitely wasn't supposed to be in that hot tub. You're definitely no. not. No, I don't think you're supposed to be in Do you think that's why at... it's my first memory? Because I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, it's a near-death experience. <laughs> yeah, my first memory ever is a hot tub. My second is 9-11. We... <laughs> I mean, I definitely have like a, a, a vivid memory of that day. And I have none of yeah, any like others. <laughs> <laughs> I was nine. I, or, I was nine or ten. Or eleven. But also my mother was in there. I thought she was dead for like seven hours. So of course that day I'll remember everything from it. Laughing at the I'm laughing at the previous conversation. I love your mom. No, it's fine. Look, we're we were there. We were trying to make jokes and stuff Why? and like ease the tension because it's trauma. It's real trauma. That's yeah. that's for real. It's in my mom. True. It's in me. We were really affected by it. That's true. And I'm I'm like that. Joking. Yeah, yeah. And I, we, we, we're all the same in my family. We, we, we have a very dark sense of humor. We joke to yeah. ease the trauma. But I'm there and I'm like seeing fans and stuff. So they're coming up to me and I'm like, yeah, uh, my mom was in the tower. And they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, she's right here. She made it out. And it's just, it, it was a bad, <laughs> it was a bad way to. That is, yeah, that's, it's a bad way to set that up for sure. She made it out with Stan Maria Wittick. Mm -hmm. She's the absolute best ever. And that was a really wholesome day. Yeah. In the midst of our fashion week. But it, um, I got real emotional at one point because we just thought like, let's just go to the memorial on 9-11 because it's, you know, the day they put the blue yeah. thing in the sky. But they have all these kids that, that like lost family members and stuff. Mm. And they're talking and they're saying that they're reading the names of the people that died. My mom says to me, you're lucky that could have been you up there, which like, you know, that hit me. Yeah. Where like I almost started crying there. Yeah. Right on the spot. Oh, yeah. No, and this is what I want to talk about. So I'm walking around with my mom and we get there and we see that it's not just like a normal day where you could just walk up yeah. to the no thing shit. and get in. There's you need like tickets to get in yeah. and they weren't going to let us in. I'm like, what? like, she's a survivor. Like, yeah. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, oh, you like, you should have said that. You should have said that. So there's like this like survivor clout, clout. that my mom has. <laughs> so once she like talked to one person, they let her cut the line or the, like they let us in, which is how it should be. Like if you were in the thing and it's a memorial for Survivor it. clout is just a crazy set of two words. All right, guys, real quick. I need to interrupt this show to explain to you guys why I'm still here in New York and why I'm not recording this ad on a nice fancy camera and microphone in the studio. There's been a flood in the Jeff FM studio. I know it sounds ridiculous. Out of all apartments, out of all rooms in the building, the one that has to have a flood is the one with all of our gear and oh, it's, it's a big mess. Uh, we can put a picture up here, show you guys what's going on. There's also been some issues with black mold, which is deadly if you breathe it in you could die so they quarantined me out of my apartment you know everything happens for a reason and we'll we'll feel we'll figure out what that reason is real soon hopefully at the end of the day i'm mostly just excited to go to a drake concert this episode is sponsored by seek thank you seek for believing in us even when our studio is underwater 
and we can no longer record from there and we have to record on our phones in a hotel room. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including sports, festivals, and more. Drake, Beyonce, Beyonce is also on tour. It's the craziest time right now to go out and see live events, and SeatGeek is the best place to get your tickets. And they put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. And each ticket is rated on a scale of one to 10, so just look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that allows you to return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know I came through for you guys? Use my code Jeff for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek with code Jeff. Make sure you click the link in the description now to download the app. Thank you SeatGeek for sponsoring the show and believe it in us, even when our studio is flooded with black mold and they have to quarantine the studio and we're no longer allowed in there. Um, thank you SeatGeek for getting us out of this hole and allowing us to rebuild. If your house happens to be flooded and you can't go in there, you know, don't don't let it bring you down. Just get out, go buy some tickets to a live event, and that will be the answer to your problems. Thank you, SeatGeek, for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get back on with it. So I've been sleeping like two hours a night, but the run with Casey was dope. We talked the whole time. We talked about everything. We talked about his documentary. We talked about... The documentary, if it ever drops, is going to be so His documentary crazy. about David, yeah. Uh, I'm in that as a fetus. Are you? Yeah, I was like... This is when I was friends with David and not you. Like, I said nice things. Did you? Yeah, I was, like, 19, though. What did you get asked about? Was it, like— My friendship with David and, like, being in the vlogs and, like— Damn, you better hope that never comes out. It's uh, Things like that are so funny, like, how things age, you know? Yeah, I mean, the story's already out there, most of it, so I get why it wasn't like that. There's not that much demand around it, mm -hmm. but, I, you know, Casey put a lot of work into it, but he don't give a fuck. He's like, he, he's got so much money. He's got a great mm -hmm. family. He wakes up at 5 a.m., goes, runs 15 miles, and Is then takes his goal? kids to school. Yeah, for sure. Do you think that seeing Casey and his, like, lifestyle made you be like, I want this, and that's kind of why your brain is like, I want to move to New York? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Casey told me a great thing. I was like, yeah, I'm really on the fence about moving out of L.A. right now. And he just moved to LA and he, he did like six months or a year there. Yeah. And I was like, do you regret doing that? And he was like, the time when I was there, I hated it. I don't know how you live there still, but it made me appreciate the city so much more. Yeah. And I was like, that's it. I don't need to hear no more. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a big believer and everything happens for a reason. So I think everything I experienced with those people in LA and mm -hmm. I still, I'll still probably keep my apartment there and the setup for Jeff FM because I, I want to pop in and maybe yeah. do an episode with you and Mike or something. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how I feel right now. Like I've been looking at apartments in New York. I toured an apartment today. Yeah. That that's for us, right? We're going to move in together. Honestly. We might end up doing that, which is kind of a crazy take. If you told me that, like, when I sat down on the first episode of Jeff FM that we'd be like, should we move in together? It is kind of wild. But I just fucking love New York, dude. I love the people. I love everything about it. And, like, it's it's such a motivating city to me in comparison to L.A. I'm just sick of L.A. I'm sick of the people. I never thought I would get to this point where I'm like, it's just like I don't want to meet another clout chaser i don't want that's to go been to another, in a circle like, of people that have dated your friends and yeah like i'm not gonna find love there i don't feel like i'm like and sincerely like turning 25 everyone says turning 25 is kind of like a quarter life moment you know i don't i don't want to say crisis because i'm really happy but yeah. like I'm, I'm just like i'm reevaluating a lot and i feel like i've been in la for like 10 years like i've done it i don't I, I agree 100 percent. i don't think i'll find love there ever yeah. And I'm just like going through the motions of life, going yeah. dating because I'm supposed to or whatever. Yeah. I agree. But here it just feels more real. People, not everybody has like like Botox and, and injections and shit like us. We bring them over. I loved us. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for, that was like a little I put myself the in there too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you sounded like less of a fucking asshole. <laughs> but people just like, they have families, you know, maybe, that, yeah, that, let me, let me take that angle. I like, think that people here, they just have, yeah, they have families and that's a big part of just I think living people in real here life. are also just more honest with truer intentions and are more themselves. Like everyone in LA is such a carbon copy of everyone else. And it's like, even mm -hmm. today I was just like eating lunch and watching the people walk by and it's like, everyone's just doing them. Like, and it's nice to see, like a lot of the bullshit's gone. I, I also do disagree. Like, I feel like I've hit the ceiling of the level of growth that I'm able to achieve in Los Angeles. Mental yeah. growth, career growth. Like, I just... 
Yeah, it's just, it's just, cool, it's just cooler here. Everything's yeah. cooler about it. I think we get this place together and we just start feeling it out, doing some episodes over here, filming with different people. Mm. And yeah, then we have kids together. And there we go. There's a dream come true. So we've actually been discussing the idea. <laughs> this is this is a crazy podcast. I never but, thought I would ever say that to you. Like uh, yeah. if we, we would have a kid together. When I first met you, I was like, this woman would this be the hooker. mother of my, my child. But like if you artificially inseminated me, we would co-parent so good, low key. I, I think you definitely have the money and, and people around you to just like. Is that really like those? Are, you don't think I'd be a great mom? Did you ever have a dog or anything like that? Like kind of. There you go. <laughs> what You can't just kind of have a kid. <laughs> no, I know that. What happened? Why did you, where, the, what happened to the dog? I had a dog for a while and I was just touring a lot and I was always gone and my old assistant really fell in love with it and was always taking care of it. So when she left, she was like sobbing over leaving and the dog and I was kind of like, I think this is the best case scenario. Yeah. So you if somebody know? likes your kid, you're going to give them the kid? <laughs> no, it's What different. a cute baby. Oh, well, you could have it. You know, when I got the dog, I lived in Vegas. I thought I'd always live there. I thought my life was going to be a lot more normal, you know. Whereas now I think I'm at a place where I'm – not that a dog and a kid are the same, but I mean – Yeah, they're not the same. They're definitely I'm not the same. I'm at a place where my, my life isn't – like my career isn't taking off. I'm not like going with the wind. Like I can kind of make my own decisions. And a kid's also an extension of you. Not that a dog isn't, but I'm saying like a child is a full-blown extension of you. And not in a narcissistic way. I, I just mean like that's – it yeah. becomes your whole world. It's not the best comparison. I get it. But um, Maybe you're not ready. You know, when I had Nerf, like I loved him like a son. But yeah, I, yeah, I could just see myself like being – obsessed and want to like change my life when that when that time comes yeah so that's why i'm just a little scared of that like when i actually am a full-blown dad am i going to change up everything and if i'm in a relationship is am i on my, on my podcast not gonna be funny anymore am i gonna be talking about my kid no you would be funny no matter what when people show you pictures of their kids nobody gives no, a fuck no but we're not to like suck our dicks for two seconds but like we're so funny i think like i'm excited for that part of my life when I look at like Whitney Cummings who's now pregnant I know Chelsea Handler never wants kids and shit but like I can't wait who to be who got Whitney pregnant <clears throat> does she have a man her or? like fuck buddy oh yeah yeah and she talks about him like he's the mailman it's so iconic not that I, I'm not saying this is the journey I want but it's so commendable like I'm obsessed with it she'll, I'll be like where's your baby daddy she's like I don't know he's in like what I, like, like yeah. she'll be like it's just it's iconic she's iconic and when I love someone or something I love so hard and I think I also it's not a vendetta, but, like, my childhood was so shitty that, like, to me, one of my biggest life goals is to change that pattern and give a child the love maybe I never received, you know? Okay. You know? I like that. Damn. Look at Silver Tana just fucking – you just turn into an Drinking angel. my water. I really do. I've been so – Well, this so version of you makes angel. me consider possibly, like – I, I know it sounds so ridiculous. Like we're fucking around. No way they would have a kid together. They hate each other at times. They like they have this fake clout relationship. Now they're gonna sell us this fake idea of them having a kid. <laughs> but I've been asked before for my seed, like to like a lesbian couple have you or really? something. Yeah, and I considered it. Like I definitely would. I did. I think say yes, but they just hadn't asked again. But if they oh. come back for it, I don't know what you do. You jerk off in a cup, and then all of a sudden yeah. they, do, they take it. They do what they want to do. They do whatever they have to do, like the scientists, <laughs> whatever. But still, like now, like even though I have a kid out there, I'm not obligated to take care of that kid at you all. You would love that shit. No, you I, that's would what love I thought. That shit. I, that's what I thought. But I feel like then, what if I'm like, no, that's me. You know, yeah, like, or I wanna, like you want to have a say in raising it, and you have no say, or you want to. I, I would you have feel to feel possessive. You know, yeah. whereas we could co-parent with us, yeah. But our parenting styles, I think, would be so different. Yeah, and it, like, what if you're, what if you got the kid smoking vapes or something? I would and I'm never like, have I, my I'm child like, smoking vapes. Absolutely not. I would never have my child smoking vapes. But seeing you now, like, you know, if I'm gonna be just dropping seeds in people, you know, like if oh, I'm gonna give, crazy. if I'm gonna be dropping that like one some Elon Musk for, shit. for, you know, my lesbian friends, and then like just do it with you, just because we would have such like a funny, like. I don't know. We would just have a, a hilarious child. It would be hilarious. It would probably come out with blonde hair, you know? Why not? I was blonde as a child. You got oh, blonde. You? So was I as a child. Yeah. So we would have a little blonde hair baby just cracking jokes, just <laughs> fighting people, <laughs> fucking everyone. That's the crazy shit. It's like our kid would come home and be like, I got bullied today. And I'd be like, they are, you know, they're hurt people, hurt people. Like they're just jealous. Take the high road. And you'd like go back to school and beat their ass. And you would have them like just – 
stir up so much shit. Like you would have them call them out publicly on the internet so they no, get bullied no, in school. No. You would make them get cyber bullied and then we would come in with the physical violence. You would be like, the, <laughs> you would do the mental warfare. No, Nobody no. could ever fuck with our kid. Like, you know how, uh, like Lana got a lot of jokes. They're like, yeah. like this kid already lost every argument in school. Yeah, which because, is crazy. Like, you know, the mother did porn. But yeah. And That's it just is a, a fault it's a, in society. It's a fault in society, but I get it. It's like a good joke, you know, like the, the kid can never say anything because all the yo mama jokes, you know? But with us, we would but, just be firing off. We'd be so on top of that. Like nobody would fuck yeah. with us. I also think I would want to let my kid like decide their own journey. Like I'm, you know, like you don't have to be in the spotlight if you don't want to be. You can't be a loser piece of shit though. Like I definitely want like a hardworking kid who... Hardworking kid sounds so like Fashion Nova, she encoded. I didn't mean it like that, but you know, a kid with drive. They fashion. need to be raised like us with nothing. You know, well, oh. not, I, mean, I, have good, I had good parents, but just, you know. I always I, talk about that. It's like, mommy might have filet mignon tonight, but you need to figure out how to cook this ramen six different ways. Builds grit, builds yeah, character. Yeah, for sure. You know? So I don't know how I would do that. <laughs> that maybe so maybe we just. I also think all my toxic behaviors are going to go out the window. Like I say shit, you know, I'm like, finesse these people, do this, do that, but like I would never. Want to instill that those values? You would though; it's in their blood. Like I, so. I don't, I don't know if you picked up on what I said in the beginning. I was like, the kid would just be fighting everyone and fucking everyone, and you know, you that even. that was a joke uh, on your part, but it's you not missed in it. Our so blood. no, well, I was the fighting part, the aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? Do you think? But it was just a joke. It was a, it was like a slut shaming joke, and I apologize for it because oh. it might have went over your head, but the audience would pick up on it, and they don't like that. Well, they now don't you like just those called me anymore. a dumb woman. You said it went over my head. So either way, you're just well. I was just saying, both of our blood together. I think we both love drama. You love drama, like mental warfare, where people. I like physical violence. Like I'm entertained by. Like I love UFC. I love combat sports. I love all this stuff. I mean, I also love the innocent, like how you love UFC. That's like a healthy way to love that. Like I love like a gossip page or like a You love pop gossip culture. pages. You love like reality yeah. show drama. Like You know, if I raised my kid with like a fairy ass motherfucker, it's like my kid's definitely going to be gay. If you raised your kid with like a hard ass, like I don't even know, you know, it's definitely – I would take the kid shopping. Well, you would no, take the, the kid. kid to play I, I mean, I had a, a like an idea of how I'm entertained by UFC mm -hmm. and like the fighting stuff, and how you love like gossip sites and you love the drama. UFC right now, like all these fight builds up, build ups like Dylan Dennis and Logan. That's why I got into UFC and fighting because yeah. it's the same thing, like the drama surrounding it and the personalities. It's like the only sport I genuinely like for that reason. It's insane right now. Like I think it's better than ever. And I want to make a segment of this show that I explain to you UFC beefs. And I know you you probably hate that idea. No, did you get this idea the other night in the car? I think so. Because I I have the same idea. I just didn't say it to you. When you yeah. were like explaining to me at Asanya versus Oh what's yeah, his yeah, 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 yeah. So Str Sean no. Strickland. I was just gonna say Strickland. Oh my God, I'm literally, I'm so for the boys. I'm literally so sporty. Yeah, um, can we try that out? Can I tell you this story of the fight that happened this weekend? Yes. And, and you'll just be like- I'll commentate, I'll react. Let's you just go. get an understanding of like why I like it so much, why I'm so obsessed. Because yeah. it's not just the sports. I don't watch NFL and like no, I, people throwing a I, ball I'm in around. Agreement. I'm not like I'm not going to sit down and like love football, but I love yeah. watching two people fight. Like I'm, oh, it's got drama. It's got actual fighting and then humiliation. Like the whoever loses gets humiliated, 100%. especially when there's that build up, like the drama that's happening now in, in these Dude, the combat Logan sports. Dylan one is like the the peak of anything I've ever seen like this on social media yeah, fighting anyways. I but. cannot I really pray that Dylan shows up because I want to see that fight so bad. I want to so be there. Bad. I was watching the face to face last night at like three AM and it was just what what do you think? It was really fucking crazy, dude. Who like, do you think won it? Well, I everyone's saying Logan Logan's was an edit of the actual face to face, right? Like I watched what was uploaded on Logan's channel, yeah. so that's that's all I can take my um, yeah. thoughts from. I think that as much as I don't necessarily love the idea of giving Dylan much credit, because I really do love Nina. He's, he is I, a good conversationalist. He was responding to Logan in a more intelligent manner than I thought he possessed. Yeah, um, I, I feel like Logan has to stay PR, which, shit, you know, they 
It's very childish back and forth. I the don't... beef, if you really break it down to what's going on, he's they're sitting across from each other. He's like, your girlfriend's a slut. It's like so middle school bullshit. Yeah. No, but Logan was going off the PR rails, in my opinion, with the like, how do you feel about your dad dying? Yeah. And like hiring the bodyguard and shit. But at the same time, good. also what Logan is doing or what Dylan is doing to Logan, if anyone was doing that to me, all bets are off. Like, you know, like I see why, like I would be throwing the lowest blows ever if I was Logan. Yeah. I don't know if he's like trying to, avoid it because of prime trying to keep a billion dollar company like clean yeah. but also i don't know so much of that is on what happens in the fight like there's so much riding on that one night i know it's guys with pillows on their fist that are just trying to put each other to sleep no, for a second but it's their lives that is why fighting is so interesting in comparison to any other sport like what if Lo like what if logan were to lose what do you think nina says that night babe it's okay Fuck i think she no. does she's got to be like you need to fucking now go I think she's going to be like, fuck him up, but she's so sweet. She loves him so much. If you love someone so much. I know. You're going to, She. I think Nina would have Logan's back no matter what, but I, I, Logan's got to win. That's all I know he's to gotta, say. He's, he's got to win. win. In the thoughts of what this shit is. I don't know? see how he could ever possibly lose. He's just, physicality wise, like he's way bigger, stronger, faster, mm -hmm. more athletic, more technically skilled in boxing, but you never know what's going to happen, which leads me to my next point. What happened this weekend with the fight? Mm -hmm. And I want to break it down to you how it went because it is insane, the fight buildup. Mm -hmm. I'm so into this shit. It's like, it's consumed my whole life. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm not even mad at it because it's, it's the best entertainment. I think we're at the best point in our lives for like combat sports, like back in the Mike mm -hmm. Tyson era that our parents mm -hmm. watched. Now, like this stuff going on right now. So you got this guy, Israel Adesanya. Mm -hmm. He's been the champion now for like three, four years, mm -hmm. just We watched him fight in Miami, right? Yeah, the man, he knocked him out, gave that speech. Like, I mm -hmm. wish you can all feel how I feel right now. This amount of happiness, mm -hmm. fighting somebody that's beat you over and over again. And you come mm -hmm. back and beat him on this stage in front of everybody. Like he is such a champion. He's mm -hmm. like the main champion of the UFC. He probably has also the most title defenses. Dog, no. So listen, this is, this is what happens <laughs> just... now. He is just looked at as like the golden boy of the UFC, right? Okay. And his strike and his highlight reels, he's like the biggest sell in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Now there's this other guy who's a white supremacist, neo-Nazi background. Like he talks about killing people. Like the only thing that makes him happy is killing somebody. Like the worst white trash piece of shit. His father was a neo-Nazi. What's the difference between, a, can I even say that word? A neo-Nazi? Like and a neo regular, and, regular Nazi? Yeah, of yeah. course. It's just, it's it's history, I guess, right? Can we? I don't know. I'm talking to him like he. <laughs> <laughs> you um, know he just had like a normal Can you say neo-Nazi on a podcast? <laughs> so, um, no, a regular Nazi is, Back in Nazi Germany, a neo-Nazi is like the KKK, like white supremacist, like m current day, just people that are fucking like skinheads. I think like the Aryan Brotherhood, you know what I'm talking about? Like that, that okay. kind of like, like. But so neo Think hates white trash what? people in jail hates everyone. They just hate anybody that's not white. So they want neo. with like, I think that's but what. But regular hates. Regular Nazis, like old school. German Nazi, neo Nazis, like American white trash, like hates, uh, okay. is just like racist and all that. Okay. So, this guy, Sean Strickland, I'll obviously, get a book too. I'll study up on it. it Next podcast, I'm gonna know everything. Yeah, he's not like <laughs> a, a good guy, you know? Yeah. He's hated for the right reasons, yeah. but he just speaks his mind, no filter, says crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And he should not ever be the champion of the representation of a massive multi-billion dollar yeah. brand like the UFC and they that don't want- That's a crazy want, thing as well that people can just, fighting such a crazy sport because it's like they don't give a fuck if you're a shit person. Like it's the know. only real sport that you don't, like it does not matter about what getting canceled. Do. Yeah. There and what you do outside saying, of the game, like what you do outside of the, you know? Yeah. Which I, I makes it more enjoyable to watch than any yeah. sport. So now this guy, yeah. somehow, some way through injuries of other fighters that deserve that spot for the title shot, mm -hmm. Yeah. The only guy left is this white trash neo-Nazi psychopath. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, he stands no chance. Mm -hmm. He starts talking shit to the champion, the golden boy, mm -hmm. digs up dirt about how he, how this guy fucked dogs and used to brag about fucking his dogs and doing all this crazy shit. <laughs> like he called out the champion, got him so embarrassed, got him crushed mentally. You the know, public the perception Bowl? of him, he found out that the that Israel, he used to fight in China 
And that's where he had like his uh, kickboxing fights for a long time. He was in some league in China. Mm -hmm. And he has interviews saying that I'm Chinese. So now he's telling this black champion that he's Chinese and he's a dog fucker on yeah. a press conference. He wins the fight. He's like, I'm going to Petco. Yeah, but it's everybody's like, like, whatever, he's going to lose the fight. He's uh, yeah. <laughs> It was a Super Bowl Disneyland. I'll go. No, but that it's true. Like, yeah. you know, the guy, he found these videos of Israel Adesanya on like interviews saying yeah. like, yeah, like shout out to the puppy. Like, what, bro? What the fuck are you saying? That's fucking crazy. Like bro. bragging about fucking dogs. But everybody's like, no way is he going to win the fight. He's just some nut job. So somehow, some way, they mm. get in there and this white guy mm. who was a neo-Nazi, now turned not neo-Nazi. I'm good on that. He has now, <laughs> he, he's now not, he doesn't hate, uh, he's not said in hate to reformed. different races. He's reformed. Yeah, so now this reformed neo-Nazi <laughs> Who's his best friend now is a black guy. He does a podcast with this guy, Chris Curtis. Yeah. They have a great relationship. It's like American History X. It's literally like the movie. He befriends a black guy. His racism goes away. Oh, totally and, away. And then he gets in the octagon and he wins the fucking fight and beats the guy. Now he's a dog fucking Chinese guy. And it's just crazy. Like nobody ever thought that was going to happen. I was going nuts watching it. Yeah. We were at the table. Uh, this like great. We were at we like a five star restaurant with like 25 people. And Jeff just, I'm not even kidding you. I don't think you ate. I don't think you spoke. You were just watching this fight. I was going fucking nuts. I mm -hmm. could not believe what I saw. Yeah. But that's just, that's the game. It's like, it's like what you get out of all those gossip sites and out of like watching Kardashians and getting that drama. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, you get the fight and you get that mm -hmm. humiliation live yeah. of that other person. And like, I don't want to say like, yeah, I like to see Izzy get humiliated because I'm a fan of him, but it is. It's like, well, it's kind of like a car see. crash you can't look away from, you know? Like, even if you love a fighter, it's like you can't look away. Yeah, I think people really get off on seeing other people get humiliated. For sure. For sure. I mean. That's what it is. That's what the people So now want. you do you think Edisonia comes back angry and there's a victory eventually? Or do you think it's irreparable? Does he continue fucking dogs? You know, does he does he make but like. That the, just wasn't even in the realm the, of my questions. You know, like I, I hope. Just like uh, his successor, that he also can become reformed, a reformed uh, bestialist. Yeah, do you, but nobody, I, I That's think. That's definitely not a word. I just made it up. By whatever. I know what you meant by it. Bestialist. Bestia the champion, bestialist. Maybe he comes Thank back. You for that. Maybe he comes back and there's a rematch and he wins and then it's he's back on top. But that's the thing. Like all this bad shit that happens is all just promo. Like yeah. with Logan and all this right Thoughts now. It's on that making, with Logan though. If Logan loses, do you think there's a comeback story? I feel like all the bad stuff just multiplies everything by a thousand. Mm -hmm. Like Connor and Khabib was the biggest pay-per-view of all time of MMA besides like <coughs> boxing with like Mayweather or whatever. Mm. And that was because they had such a crazy backstory with like uh, talking about his family, his religion, mm -hmm. his father, like mm. he crossed the line. He was like the first to really cross that line with mm. fight promo. And I looked on YouTube and that uh, press conference had like 8 million views and Logan and Dylan already have like 4 million in a day on their face to face yeah, at their press crazy. conference. So they're already putting up numbers like the biggest fight of all time. Well, anger is also such a derivative here, such a, like, you know, like how angry Logan must feel in comparison to Dylan. I also yeah. feel like. And since we're all so fueled by wanting to see people humiliated, what better people to watch than people that are so easily, like, hated, you know? Dylan Dennis is the most hated of the combat sports world because all he does is talk shit online and never fights. Yeah. And now Maybe you have I Logan. become a fighter. You can make a lot of money doing that, but I don't think you have to. Yeah. And I'm down for that if you want to. I'm down to train you and put all, drop everything in my life and just get you to be the best fucking female fighter in the world. But imagine me with like braids and a mouth guard. That would be so sick. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know, uh, you know? And it's just Those like- Those tight uh, ass braids right when you're walking out and they're putting Vaseline on your face and you're like hitting yourself like that. Imagine you coming yeah. out like that. I just that. got a wig and I had to have braids under the wig, you know? So I was like looking in the mirror. I was like, should I become a fucking boxer? Yeah. Definitely not. I don't want a second nose job. Like that's just so much work. It's just like, I don't- And I feel like the same amount of- uh, career success that I could get from fighting, I could also get from having a baby. What do you <laughs> That's mean? That's a like, crazy sentence. I'm kidding. How is that possible? Like, think about Trisha after she had Malibu Barbie. Like, it was just like- But a, she doesn't make content off, off yeah. the baby. She does? 
not off the baby, just with the baby. You know, she oh, loves okay. She, the she baby. just take, she like shows the baby off and stuff. Yeah, there's yeah. also other things I could do. I guess I don't really need to take it that far. No, I I'm just entertained by it, and I kind of like that I'm not heavily involved in it. Like if I were fighting like Logan, you know, it is a lot of stress too. I'm sure he's going through it right now, and it's hard for him to see the the positive outcome after all this because he hasn't done the the yeah. night yet. You know, I like wonder. you never know what happens that night of. What if mm -hmm. you have a cold? What if you're just like not feeling good? Mm -hmm. What if you have an adrenaline dump? Injuries happen, you know, like fucking. Are you going to go to the fight? Hell yeah, I of wanna course. I want to go. Where is it? It's in London. You should it's definitely be London. there. Yeah. I think I want to go. I, I know people are like, oh, you meet Ride and all that. Because like I, I do impulsive sometimes and I hang out with Mike and all that. Meet but, Ride sometimes for sure. Yeah, but <laughs> it's genuinely putting up numbers like crazy and I'm really fucking excited it's to see it. It's also like there is something so even just like in the tail end of like my like knowing Jake era, like about knowing someone and watching them fight that's crazy. It's like, way more like, nervous than actually being in the fight when you when you yeah. see somebody like in there. knowing someone and what even if it's like Sugar Sean and we're all in Vegas and he's gonna mm -hmm. like fight, like there's something about knowing someone that like makes it so crazy to me. Like because you feel like you're a part of it and you're rooting for obviously one person more than the other. Were you, you ever dating like, Jake when he was in a fight? Were you ever like his so. his like trophy no. like on it? No? Like no. walked in with him and no? That's, I don't think that would be. Well, this was kind of before, like, he had all those, like, he was really heavily in it, right? You yeah. guys were dating? I don't Damn. know what it was. Maybe that's what will happen to me. I'll go from, you know, shit Would you ever fight? You. Like, can you fight, like, with your. Well, that's why I'm doing jiu-jitsu now, because I want to stay training, but also eye surgeries and shit that it happened randomly. I just had an eye doctor Have you appointment. you told them about the 50-50 thing yet? Ah, uh, nah. I don't want to keep talking about the eye, you know? Like, and also... I hate that you feel like you can't talk about it too much. At least this is my, like... That you feel like you can't talk about it too much. Well, the only things that really piss me off are, like, certain comments where it's like, oh, I talk about that. And like, yeah, like, oh, anyone you keep in their right mind it. would talk about it forever if you literally can't see out of your eye, especially at the fault of... Yeah. Yeah, but you. I... Uh, this, people think I'm, like, trying to use it to like start drama and stir the pot. But if I was going to do that, I'm not going to talk about my fucking eye. Yeah. I could just drop nukes. I have nukes that will expose everything and put yeah. everything to sleep. Any other theory this... that anybody has where it's like, oh, you agreed to it. You did this. Yeah. Like I, I can do that. I will do that eventually. Yeah. But I'm trying to figure out shit the right way and do things the right way and listen to the people that are spending a lot of time to help me out with mm. my case and shit. This so. surgery the like where you're at right now is just so interesting to me. I met a new doctor. He's really good, really respected. Neuro-optometrist gave me an option of like a really risky surgery that could put my eye back in one shot and like get it pushed up and right in the right place where it's supposed to be. But he's also like, it's like a 50-50 chance. So I just- Like, like essentially there's a 50% chance the surgery goes perfect and you have 20-20 vision and there's a 50% chance that you lose all vision. Yeah, but also doctors say that. They're like, it's 50-50 so that when they do the good job, it's like, look, it was so risky and I killed it, you know? Yeah, I don't... That's like what lawyers do when I would get arrested and they'd yeah. be like, you're facing 25 to life, but I'm going to get you down to six months. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you, you still got me so fucking much. six months, motherfucker. You know? <laughs> that was a great analogy, honestly. Are do you? Is there a part of you that's even imploring this idea or no? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I would not do it. Me. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not in this situation. I'd be so scared of the idea of, like, you got something well, right Well, I now. got, like, I, I look at it like this. Like, I got, like, 30, 30 years left, 40 years left, maybe. You know, if everything goes good. So. Definitely 40. I want those 15. years to be, like, live my life at, at my full potential. Be the, Like, if it gets fixed, imagine how, like, everything I just complained about for the past three years was for nothing. Yeah. But it's kind of a part of you. Yeah. That's a stupid thing to say. No, about. no, I get it. I, it is. It has become a part of me. So whatever. That's why I don't talk about it. Whatever it is, what it is. So do you really think I got fucked with a toothbrush? All right, guys. Real quick, today's episode is sponsored by DoorDash. Love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door with DoorDash grocery delivery. You can stock up for the week or order last minute cravings conveniently. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. 
You'll get exactly what you ordered or we'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Want even more value? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with Dash Pass membership. With easy substitutions right in the app and best class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code Jeff Fall. That's J E F F F A L L. Three F's. At checkout, use that Jeff Fall code at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code Jeff Fall. That's J E F F F A L L. Don't forget that's Jeff Fall for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. All right, thank you, DoorDash, for sponsoring this show. Now let's get back on with it. What did you say? I got fucked by a toothbrush? I just want to say this one time on the record. I've never been fucked with a toothbrush. I posted this story time, and it was actually, it had an amazing message, Jeff. Yeah. Like, where I was like, I was in high school, and this guy spread this rumor that he fucked me with a toothbrush, and he never did. And he ended up just being a piece of shit person and got his karma. And, like, you know what I mean? And I just— Oh, so whatever. it was a lie. But no, that- but no. Someone just clipped it of me just, like, yelling about me basically being like, he said he fucked me with a tooth. You know what I mean? But then they just clipped it. That's yeah. all I saw. Yeah, which is crazy. I just had this girl come to my show in Cincinnati in the meet and greet. And I'm doing this whole segment on cancel of shit people have told me at the meet and greet because it is just fucking Mm -hmm. wild. And this girl was like with her boyfriend who was there. She was like, I just fucked him in the ass with a toothbrush because of you. Like we were like, oh, my God, I'm so inspired by Tana. And I was like, that's just crazy that like there's just a lot of people out there from that clip. Who just yeah. think I got fucked? What's the point even? Like, why would you want With a toothbrush? Well, what side of it would it be? I, what Did I he mean, say that it was the bristles? Like, he stuffed the I don't. Br- I don't think he specified. I don't really remember. I got to stop getting it too, into too no. much detail well, with sex. Because is- I already had such a headache with YouTube this past week. with posting the podcast on the channel. Also, I should probably take a moment to apologize to uh, YouTube for my public rant, my slander that I did to them. <laughs> I was frustrated. We're out here doing all this stuff. I'm uploading a podcast for four days trying to get the podcast up, and it just kept on getting striked. They would not let me make it public. <coughs> and I didn't know if it was the channel, if it was the whole channel that got hit because they hit mm-hmm. all of our episodes together. Mm-hmm. And by hit, I mean like they just cut the money from it. So yeah. when it cuts the money that it makes and they're not able to advertise, they stop pushing the video because it doesn't benefit YouTube anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's just like it's a business. You know, we want everything to perform the best so it continues and we could keep on doing it. Yes. And when this was happening, it's my livelihood, you know, and I'm talking to YouTube. I Like I'm asking every all my friends for help. Nothing's happening. It's four days goes by. People are like, where's the fucking podcast? You're lazy. You're out party and at fashion week i'm like no i'm literally trying to upload this and finally i just go on a rant on twitter i get a response from team youtube it's like an automated Automated, bot system Mm -hmm. and then i'm just furious i'm like going after everybody i screenshotted my views lifetime views that i provided for youtube Mm. that i've accumulated over the years provided for youtube is so funny like the ceo susan is at home like god Thanks, Jeff. They have Another trillions. Barbershop. They have trillions. And I'm like, I got you 500 million views <laughs> over 12 years. <coughs> but um, I was even about to screenshot the money because like the ad sense for my entire oh, yeah. life, I have none of it anymore. It's all been spent, but it was over a million dollars. And I was going to post that. I really had to that. stop you from tweeting that. Yeah. I was going to post that and be like, look, this is my half of the 50-50 split. How much more do I need to make you guys to take me serious over here? I respect your um, persistence and determination to Mm -hmm. remain monetized. Like I just, like I'm constantly just taking L's on monetization on YouTube and I really do just. Well, also people like. Sit with it. People think like I'm petty and like I'm complaining all the time and they're like, why do you care so much about this? Like, why would you even like engage in that? It's fun for me. I like that. That's that's where like. Just own it. Like you're yeah. petty sometimes. Yeah. I'm petty sometimes. Like I'm I laughing as I'm tweeting out at YouTube. Yeah. Like I've accumulated 500 million views for you. I made you over a million dollars from – this is my half of the – Do you mi- think that we like, like petty turbulence and creating chaos because it's like what feels comfortable to us? Like if you have like a really chill week and nothing pisses you off or upsets you like – Something's coming. That, yeah. Something will get me going. If everything's, <laughs> if everything's going great, then it'll just be a little minor thing that gets me – pissed off but yeah, for this trip this trip coming out here flights delayed then we land on the runway we're stuck on the runway for two hours yeah. because a You're fight broke out shit. yeah i'm bringing your clothes Thanks. a fight breaks out on the plane 
and they're arresting the two people that are in the back of the plane and they held everyone on the plane on the runway which for is two crazy. hours. Which like, I'd rather be sitting in jail for two hours than in a seat. I would like, fake a seizure. I tried to get off. I was like, oh, they're letting these guys off that are getting arrested for getting in the fight. I'll just get in the fight and get arrested too just to get pulled off the plane because I don't know how long we we're going to be there for. I was like, this is the way out. Fucking take me too. And I you stood up. You get to up. the jail. It's like your hotel. You're like ordering room service and shit. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. It would have been hell if I got arrested. Over, I would. I, I probably did the right thing. Honestly, I'm- I got up and I tried to get off. And I don't want to be like, if anybody sees me there, like, who the fuck does this influencer think he is? He's like, he's going to get off. I thought people would all follow me and we could like maybe <laughs> like just bum rush, like start a riot. Because they yeah. were, it was literally like almost to the point where it was like illegal to keep people there till yeah. it, it was 3 a.m. now. That's we, happened to me. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah. We're supposed to land at 11 and get off the plane. Now you're keeping people on the plane till 3 a.m. there. Like mm -hmm. what? 300 people you're just yeah. keeping like detained basically because yeah. two other people did something illegal. So I got up and I go over to the front and I'm like, I got to get off. I got to get off. And I thought like people were going to bandwagon behind me, but it was just me there. So he was like, get back in your seat. Are you getting arrested? I was like, all right, all right, all right fine, I fine. I am so grateful to God I wasn't on that plane with you. Yeah. I almost I flew with you and it's just, I feel like you were giving the that motherfucker's not real girl. You know, that was your energy. That would have been me. I would have gone viral for that. And also I, I it would have, been bad for me because time. it would ruin, yeah, and it would ruin my entire image. Brand, I honestly would everything. love to be bailing you out of jail. I'd make a whole vlog. I'd be like, get ready with me to bail Jeff out of jail. I know, I know. We <laughs> talked about it. You, you would love that. But you'd probably use my credit card. You'd probably just get I'm my credit sure. card. Are you kidding me? You don't think I have photos of the front and back by now? Yeah, so that happened. And then I thought my luck would turn around. I get to my yeah. hotel. I didn't stay at your fancy hotel. I stayed at the hotel Mike told me to stay at. Which was just... And it Beyond it me. was like a a like a pod. It was like a mm. like one of those Japanese pods where like you can rent like Wi Fi and you go in like a little room and you just have to sit up mm. like this. Mm. I was like this in my room now trying to sleep and the AC <coughs> was broken in the room, but I thought it was just like not on, like pumping good. I get to the room from the three a.m. flight. It's like five a.m. now. I'm trying to fall asleep. And the room was like 90 degrees. Oh, uh-uh. So I wake up just drenched in sweat. I'm at the front desk and someone's having a horrible morning at that point. I went down there and I told them, I was like, look, my whole room's fucked. Like I, I want, you know, I was just, now I'm finally starting to snap. Like this is where I control my anger now, breathing and all that. Like this is really being pushed now. Get a new room, everything else goes wrong. The whole trip, everything's been going wrong until we started hanging out. Once yeah, I started- you saw me and you were happy. Yeah, then I saw you and everything. My luck started turning around. We went to the fashion shows. We ate that candy there. It was a big hit. <laughs> wasn't we, planned, by the way. People were like, that was a publicity stunt. I did. I, that's so funny because I was about to be like, we planned that. And it was so funny. <laughs> well, and we planned it uh, like when we were outside. Like I had already had the candy on me and I was like, oh, we'll just eat this in the front row. That'll be funny. Also, but I, like, it wasn't like we came to fashion week. I got canceled last year for kind of making a joke at like saying like fashion shows are kind of it's not, they're not always boring. Like sometimes the clothes are really cool and whatever, but that like we were just going for clout and just stir the pot and everyone was so mad at that. And then this year, everyone was like, Tana was so right. That's what everyone does and whatever. And it kind of like turned around, but it, it is fun for us to be like, how do we kind of have fun here? Yeah. Like, cause the, it's, it's all a business thing. The fashion shows are inviting us so that we're seen there so that, it, you know, it's boosting their brand and their launch. And their, and I don't just mean us. I mean all influencers and celebrities. And the same thing for celebrities and influencers. It's like, yeah. I want to be seen there. I want to, you know, it's a PR move as well. So everyone's just yeah. fucking lying about it not being that. And it's just and such a ridiculous thing. When, when the outfits get really stupid, it's like so easy to just troll it and make fun of it. And if we're not doing that, then we're not being real. If we're not in the front row eating candy then we're just being posers, fake ass And I think people. it's just funny that people look down on things like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like respect like, oh. the fashion. Like, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, Mario was sitting next to us, one of my, like, great friends, and he he takes it very seriously, and he wanted no part of your and my camaraderie. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. And both videos are, like, being circulated on the internet. Mar yeah, I well, know we Mario were just trying to figure shit out because – when we got there, we realized like, yeah, last year we, well, you got in trouble and then I just rode with you. You know, we made that micro pod. We thought that was going to be a thing that caught on. I but really wish that caught on. Micro pods would be sick. Just TikTok, just fucking- Like a three going, minute podcast. Going around, emergency uh, micro pod. We should do that. 
Lord. Well, we didn't really get canceled this year for it. Everybody thought it was just funny that we were just sitting there eating candy. And then I tried to kiss you and you like we were like pushing me away. Yeah. We were just winging it. We were just trying to have fun, make the best of it. And it was fun. It was good. I, you know, we'll be back. This is a tradition. We'll be back. We we're going to have to go to all the fashion weeks now and do a stunt in the front row. Like a Milan moment. I want like a. Yeah. yeah. I think like next one we, we're eating hot dogs or something. Yeah. Absolutely. Bananas, like have a banana, just eat it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's for a different website for me. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Got it. You know like I do a, that like frequently. Like if I just, I'll just like eat a banana. Oh yeah, it. that's what. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that scratch that idea. Mother of your children. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's the one right there. That's who I added. <laughs> Thirty three years being alive on the hunt, I found the one that I want to I want to have my child. <laughs> She's out here eating bananas behind a paywall. But hey, that kid, yeah. kid, whatever you want it, baby gap, you know? Okay, so we're moving in together in New York. <laughs> we're serious. artificially, because we had this conversation on our last podcast that it was just you and I in Jersey. We were talking about like artificially inseminating you. And you, oh, were we? you thought it was like a big joke. You're like, did you really just say that to me? Like you did not just say that well, you no, want to artificially. Well, no, but you were saying it in a regard of like you would rather die than fuck me. So it's like, like, get the turkey baster. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, like, I don't want to fuck you. And, like, we don't have to fuck, like, artificially yeah. inseminate me. But, like, if you act like it would be the highlight of your life. I'm looking at it more like when I say it, actually, like, if I were, like, say you're on the verge of becoming infertile anymore. You know, like, you're 30, what does it go? How, when like do you 40? become infertile? I think, like, 40, oh. is it? Is it 40? When do women become infertile? Because I know Al I'm Pacino, so sorry that you're Al, paid Al Pacino to just, just had a baby at like 80, you know? Mm -hmm. And happens faster once you reach your mid 30s. Mid 30s. Fertility has declined so there you much. go. So if you don't get it done in, in the next like 10 years, yeah. then you're going to be feeling how I'm feeling right now. But I could go like, so like, 80. like Al Pacino, you know? Hey, yeah. hey. I guess I would freeze my eggs maybe. I don't even know what I would do. You've been uh, bonding with my ex and all of his friends. I love that kid. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> Which I, I find so funny. You know, somebody with a bunch of face tats like that doesn't really mm -hmm. seem like somebody I get along with. I can respect his, I just don't give a fuck about nothing. You know, like mm -hmm. he sees you like, yeah, she's fucking this guy, but she'll be done with him in a week. And you know, Oh, that's not, back no, 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 that's you. Uh, no, that's what, that's how he acts with you. No, I feel like he doesn't. He's so jealous, psycho. Oh, yeah? Yeah. but I'm, That's not the vibe I got from him. Really? I, I, I felt like he's just like, Today I went on like a little lunch date and he was like all pressed. He like found out. How did he find out? Did he listen to one of your podcasts? I put it on my story. That you what? I, no, I just put the person I was with on my story. Yeah. Yeah, but these dates aren't really working out for me. I've been so I'm I've been joking around about like being like celibate, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm actually really like in my celibacy era. I think I'm reforming my sex life as well. Like I've just done a lot of crazy shit and. You know, I think that I want to become like a missionary queen, but I've actually been really celibate. It's funny and with I've this been, with this outfit on and you saying this like at It's funny though, I'm wearing like a slutty ass mini skirt. Like, like you're a newscaster. Just, but on the podcast right now, I do look like a newscaster because they can't see the horniness of my outfit. You could be whatever you want, you know? <laughs> it's Tana's world. It's but I've like been the going bar. on dates and not hooking up with people and just actually like, you know, being wholesome and it's it's so interesting. Yeah, that's how I am all the time. I go on dates. I don't even kiss. You literally I don't even fuck. kiss. You literally fuck. And I have before, yeah. No, but you're you're like horny. I, I mean, I'm I'm a I would like for the first time like ever, I was like seeing you be like horny and I was like, this is weird. Like I had to go. I actually seeing me be horny? How do you even <laughs> see that? What do you what I was just like, oh Jeff like is horny right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cause I was like, like, like And then I had this whole thought, like, it's so weird to me that you like jack off. I, I maybe I don't. You definitely do. I have, but <laughs> I try not to make a habit out of it. Really? Yeah, because I feel I feel like that desensitizes you to actual sex. Mm. You okay. know, I really want to live life. Like I don't feel good after jerking off. If I had sex with a person that, like, I, it's funny. I gotta stop hanging out with Mike and like doing podcasts with Steiny because they they called it high value kills. That's when yeah. they, they. That's just the. It's so cringe to say that. It's so but like bad. it's the, it means like a quality woman. Like you know you found. Well, they a quality, definitely mean like 
a, a or just clouded hot or and hot. clouded. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, you could you could have your own. I look at that. it like what I told you when you asked me my type earlier on on that live stream, and I was mm-hmm. like, maybe a, a maybe a, a girl with a kid, like she has some responsibility, and she's mm-hmm. like a just like living a real life, like yeah. she wakes up and makes sure kill. that that kid is alive, you know, yeah. and make sure that that kid has food, and mm-hmm. I don't know, I just respect stuff like that. So that's yeah, to me, that's a high value kill. Like I feel good after I get a high value kill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. It's just still, it's, it's just, I, I hear if Mike. I jerked off to a picture of a not high value kill. Yeah. I feel bad about myself. I feel ashamed. I feel really, I feel depressed. I feel like I don't want to go out and talk to people after if I just jerked what? off, I don't want to go out and talk to people. I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that's healthy. I think it's different for a girl though. Cause when you're let me be careful around this because last time I talked about the massage therapist as a female and a- When do we get to massage therapy? Well, I was talking about a a female therapist because Mike goes to a female therapist. I know it's because she's hot. I'm certain of that. And I made a joke about it saying that like, oh, I would never go to a a female therapist unless it was a massage therapist. Mm. I was making a joke and everybody took it the wrong way. But like, I think with hormones, a woman releasing is not like a man releasing because you release your testosterone. And that's what keeps men like, like our energy, our like depression, everything comes from levels of testosterone, I don't like know your enough, hormone levels. I don't know enough about all the release when it comes to anything like that to like comment on that. Well, with fighters. I just think I you should be able to, to talk to people. We go back to fighters for everything. After you jack off. Not like, it's not like a week that I need to stay in the house, but it's just like- Like an hour? I can't jerk off in the morning You need like a refractory period? I would need a nap probably to reset my day. I would need to either like- Okay, Jeff, I don't, every time I've ever called you like 85, like it's a joke, but like that's really funny. It's been my, it's been like that my whole life. Post 20s, if I jerk off, I'm ashamed of myself. (laughs) <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Actually, he doesn't. Actually, you get what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah. No, you're paying him right and now. And also, yeah, like, guess, also like men want to keep their testosterone when you're in a fight camp because that's what makes you into an animal. That's what gives you energy. That's what makes you want to be a provider and go protect women and stand up for yourself. That's what you need. That's why people inject steroids to boost their testosterone. You know? I have a dinner. You want, so, I'm going to go. <laughs> We need f- like five more minutes. Is that okay? okay? What time's your dinner? I'm kidding. I just love doing that to you. Okay. You get me good too and you crush my confidence too. I feel like I just jerked off and now I have to sit here and do another 20 minutes of a podcast. Are you just keeping me here because I told you that the dinner I have is like with the love of my life? Uh, <laughs> no, just because- No, I- I'm beating you too much. Am I too mean to you? No, fuck no. I mean, I think I'm meaner sometimes. Do you? Yeah. Because okay, we're in the same boat. The other day you were like- Walking down the hallway and I like said something about your outfit. Like I was joking with you and I really liked your outfit. I was just joking and I like felt mean for like 20 minutes. And I had this whole thing to page where I was like, am I too mean to Jeff? But then you called me like a whore in front of like five people in the same uh, well, hour. The, and the, like, whore, the whore thing is always a joke, obviously. But <laughs> the uh, but I was doing the same shit to you. I was like, you're not going to wear that, are you? Or it's I was like, true. I was like, are you wearing, are you? Sh- but I feel like you're nicer to me than I am to you sometimes. I, I've been getting checked a lot lately too by Mike because Mike's very sensitive and he's been like, yo, you say the worst shit to me, you say I do heroin and all that. And then like his mom was saying that I'm too mean to him and he was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. So I feel mm. like Mike's been making me nicer. Mm. But if I'm mean to you, that means that, that but uh, you you're like, like a good friend. Mike is almost meaner in like a real way. Like he'll say some actual just out of touch like rude ass shit. And then it's yeah. like, I feel like, love you, Mike. I love you. He's going to hate that. But he, and then he does say like, some things like that fucking, like a dagger. Like, you no, know? last time we were here, Mike was, Mike was so mad at me. Yeah. He, he like, we podcasted and I was like on my phone and I mm-hmm. guess I just have bad memory when I'm on a podcast with someone and it's not flowing like this. I'm going to reference like topics, you know? And mm-hmm. so I was like looking at topics and on my phone. And also you and I just are very comfortable or Brooke and I, where we just go on our phones yeah. while podcasting. And afterwards, Mike was just like, so. Sorry, 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 upset with me. And he was yelling. Yeah. And what did he say to me? He was just like, you need some actual fucking advice from a real podcaster or something. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn. Like, I like to think I'm a real podcaster. I like to think You're one of the top, top female podcasters in the game. I'm just saying I, female because there's like uh Like you and I would never Rogan have a conversation stuff, but, like that, though, where you'd like dig at me. Like you might clown me, but you're not going to like... But I guess my relationship with Mike is not obviously very. But different. who else in your world is actually doing like besides Alex like Cooper. A, yeah, Alex Cooper is probably your only competition, really. Sophia Franklin. 
That's it. No, there's more. There's more. I'm just blanking right now. There's so many more. Everyone has a But like so, like you are your own thing. Like nobody can say that they put you on. Like, I and other like people that I'll people speak. To... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, no. I'll come back to it because I know it's a juicy topic that you want to. I, I definitely accredit some people to putting me on in parts of my career. Like I'll mm-hmm. always give like Bella Thorne some credit and Jake yeah. Paul some credit. But I, I have kind of done my, I don't know. It's different. Yeah. You built your audience off of you. They people could be in that circle or around those people, but there's a reason why they stayed and watched you, you know? I, I could say the same about you, though. Thank you. Yeah, I like to think they were both like that, you know? Sometimes when people are like, oh, you got your career from this guy, I'm like, what the fuck? That, that guy got his career from his girlfriend. And speaking of, we saw her the other night, too, you know? That was fun. That was a nice moment. She was really so, oh, so sweet. I saw Liza. She was so sweet. And we had a nice chat outside the I club. I love Liza Koshy. She's so I dope. I haven't seen and she's, her in years. She's but. so funny. You two should do a, a podcast together. Every time I good. see her, we do just like vibe. Like she's she's so amazing. Yeah. She. I should try to get her on canceled. I wonder if she would. Yeah. Um, she was looking hot too. I she, think I was telling you that I think you have to fuck her. I mean, I would just love to just sit down and have a conversation with her for three hours, you know? She had jokes the other night, too. She I know. Was she really was on funny. fire. She was, she was funny. funny. She was really funny. Liza out of the club, fashion week. <laughs> she looked great. She had, like, some snow boots on, <laughs> just rocking just them, the confidence. Them I love a confident girl, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that's what I that's what I meant by saying, like, you know, my type. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. A girl that's got stuff going for her, confident. Not too much, Responsible. Though. You gotta be. But also a little <laughs> mentally ill. You know, you gotta be nuts. But if you're in this business, you're fucked in the head anyway. So Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. All right. Anything else going on? What do we do? We did street interviews yesterday. We'll put out another video that is, uh, it's like what we did last year, the first um, fashion week that we did together. Yeah. Now it's become like a tradition. We street did street interviews. interviews. So uh, you didn't like them this year, but I think they were so funny and we shot for like yeah. a little longer. I think that with street interviews, you just have to have faith in the edit, you know, and it, it's going to be so good. It will be really good. And you were on fire yesterday. We got celeb cameos. We got violence. This guy, he threw a banana at me. I almost got shot in a smoke shop. That is also the thing about street interviews that people don't know. They see the end product and they're like, oh my God, they're so funny and wild. And this happened in 20 minutes. It's like five hours of manically running around a city. I don't know what it is, but it's like asking people the craziest shit and you hope they say crazy shit back. But I was hitting duds yesterday. I was offending people left and right. I was like, and you like, I'm a girl, so I can get away with a lot more in that regard. That if I ask a guy some crazy shit, he's going to be like this fucking whack ass bitch and like walk away. Whereas like you... You're so sweet. That's what they would um, say. I'm not saying that. <laughs> You'll ask a guy some crazy ass shit and he'll like want to fight you, you know? And it's Yeah, like, but that's what I, I love. I love that I get that type of reaction out of people like a- because that's the show we're trying to make. You know, this one is dope. We got celeb cameos, but also I need to like your wholesome questions and then like your, yeah. your nice like joking around with a girl question. And then it just cuts to me like almost Chaos. getting shot. Yeah. Like I walk into a smoke shop and I'm like, empty the fucking register. Give me all the fucking money. You're Give insane. me that banana. You're and insane. the guy, <laughs> he, he fucking, he pointed the banana at me like it was a gun. And then he started smacking my guy, my guy's camera, my cameraman's camera. He's smacking Kyle's yeah. camera. Kyle stays filming. He's. I'm, I was I'm, down the street on Canal Street buying a fake Chanel bag. Don't ask questions. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. 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 You missed that one. Yeah. And then, well, I like purpose. Whenever I see some shit escalate like that, like I run away. I'm just, it's just not my vibe. Yeah. But if I find somebody that's like already mad and aggressive, I'm like, oh, yeah. this is a gold mine. This guy's going to go yeah. nuts on me yeah. and it's going to be perfect. That's what makes the videos crazy. Yeah. For so sure. I, that, I think that's one of my favorite interactions was with that guy when he threw the banana at me crazy. and I thought he was going to pull a gun on me and he started smacking Kyle and the camera and Kyle, I was like, yo, yo, stop filming. And Kyle's just still filming. I'm like, stop yeah. filming me. But I, I haven't. The like, black Chanel bag was so cute, by the way. It had like a crossbody strap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I not ask you questions anymore? Did we just come on here and I talk about myself? Because that's how I felt like this one went today. No, I, this was good. I think you should be more worried about real life. Like what's going on in the world? No, no, no. I was kidding. I was saying, like, I was saying in real life, you should care more about me. Oh, I, you know? yeah. No, I do. You, like don't I was don't like, put oh, that out there because I care so like, much uh, about you. Like, you ever ask me about anything? I'm always there. Do you think you asked me like how my day was ever? Yeah, of course. I think I did on this podcast today, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, was, what have you been up to? I have to stop. I have to stop. I'm just kidding. I think you care. About I feel that. like we did a good balance of mixing what I usually talk about yeah. and like combat sports and translated it into woman. 
you know, like this is <laughs> this is what this is sandwich what, and kitchen and fight. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like uh, you know, I feel like women could understand that because they're like, why do guys like fighting all the toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, yeah. all that? But it's not. It's the drama leading up to it. I, I don't care about that. the early prelims with the guys that are just professional fighters that are just in the gym all day, yeah, working out. They're boring. Fight I want is people drama that too, expose woman. people. You fuck the dog. <laughs> you said that you're Chinese when you're not even Chinese. You know, yeah. like that's the shit that I want to see. That's what keeps me going. It's like I'm watching, you know, that's just, just like, juicy drama Kyle entertainment. Like Jeff FM. He used to be I know. <laughs> that's it. We're Fashion <laughs> Week. We did it. I've had a great week with you. I'm excited to have a kid and I'm excited to move in together. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we get from this, right? That's what this episode was. We're moving in together, having a kid. And I think this is a great episode. Shoot here, and it's the beginning of a potential New York journey for us.